Welcome to Tech Lake Video Tutorials. This is Ravi. If you're not subscribe my channel, please subscribe my channel. And uh, today video, I'm going to give you more information about what is exactly vacuum command and how it will help you in Delta Lake. Okay, so what is exactly vacuum command and how it will help you in Delta Lake. So before that, we need to create one table and the table should have some data and uh, what is exactly vacuum, then we'll discuss that. So I'm going to create an employee table or maybe a small table or bigger table you can create. So that script, if you are looking for any employee table, sample data and sample DDL, which is available in my GitHub. So if you go to my GitHub repository, this is my GitHub username and repository. So there you can find employee script. If you go here, there's an employee script. You can copy this script. There's a copy command, you can copy this. Okay, and uh, you can go and create these tables. You can create uh, both the tables. You can create uh, both tables. It's a SQL command. Use a percentage SQL. So before that, it is a community edition. When it comes to community edition, if you terminate the cluster, if you have all your tables, the metadata will get deleted. But backend tables will be there, data will be there. To avoid those issues, what we can do, we can remove existing data if you already have in a user hive warehouse location individually you can delete employee and department table or you can delete enter because it's a community edition because you will be using this but don't apply this in real time because if our production environment or development environment by mistake if you delete this recursively it will delete every table if you go with the warehouse okay so just i gave only one table employee table similarly i gave another table department table so don't try in a development environment or production environment with a warehouse location because rm minus r recursively it is going to remove all the folders subfolders so be careful about this but community edition it's okay because you'll be using that backend if you have a data we are deleting that now i'm going to create this employee and department table to explain you more about vacuum so before going to understand vacuum the data should uh, the table should have some multiple versions table should have some multiple versions so i'll take uh, this table department table which is having a small data which is having small data and after that even we can uh, go go with edit history which you can verify edit history using a uh, describe history describe history table name so that will give you how many versions are there how many versions are there so just wait a few seconds still the table is creation in progress and whenever you insert a record right so every record it will insert a new version so that i'll show you that so this table will have only four records, only four records. And whenever you, whenever you go with the describe history, table creation and data insertion. So here we created a separate table. Here DDL, the first you see this, create table, it's a delta, delta type, and we inserted data. Now if I do any operations, any changes on that, multiple versions will be there. Consider, if I go and delete the data, where department number equal to 10. So this data I'm going to delete from this table. So what will happen? It will delete the data and it will back end it will have a old file, new file backend it will have a old snapshot new snapshot so this data we are not able to fetch this data because it's deleted other records are available but when you go to the backend even you can describe history you can find the latest version so this is the latest version and if you go with the previous version right you can retrieve data from previous version so select star from this table version as of one so 
you will get a previous version data when you are getting a previous version data means the, in a back end there are already previous version snapshot available snapshot means separate data file will be available in that how to verify that we'll go to this table location so default data bricks table will be created under user under hive under warehouse then your table name database name or table name if it is a database name another folder will be there direct default database if you go to this default database is not refreshed okay so now you see this two snapshots are available old snapshot and uh, current latest snapshot latest data and previous deleted data so if you go to this location you can find a json log file so you see this two versions total three versions initially metadata will be there you see this this file it treated as a remove okay this file whenever you delete write it will treat at that file as a remove and it will create a new file it will create a new file okay and uh, that which file it is removed that statistics also you can find this so remove this is a logical remove this one okay then uh, remaining three records it's created another because this is a previous file which is having a 10 20 30 40 we deleted 10th record then remaining 20 30 40 records it's created another file so that previous file it's treated as a remove physically it is not deleted so that's why if you go there you can find a data file okay so this file you can remember this uh, c8b 517 the file is a new file c8b is a old file you see this this is an old file it's deleted this is a new file it is added but this file will be there for next 30 days this file will be there for next 30 days that's a time travel delta is going to keep you whenever you do insert update delete right so insert is a new version whenever you do update whenever you delete right so the old data will be there new data will be there old will be separate snapshot nothing but separate version wise you can track it that it will be there for 30 days if you don't want to manage this older versions data older snapshots physically also you don't want logically it is removed logically that data has been removed which if you go to this square table if you query this table without versioning logically already removed this data 10th department is not available in this table but physically still the file is available so if you want to remove that old snapshot data to reduce the cost of storage storage cost that's all and uh, there is no difference in performance even if you have older versions there is no much difference in performance because delta always will look at uh, transaction log files the transaction log files will have a latest files that file only it will read the data okay but 30 day snapshot if you if you're not looking for that then you can use a vacuum vacuum is one of the option which you can delete older snapshots older snapshots so how to delete this so before deleting even you can verify this using option called dry run so vacuum then table name you can use dry run so whenever you go with a dry run it will tell you that uh, which all the uh, data which is going to delete but by default vacuum can delete greater than 168 hours i'll repeat again seven days are 168 hours so greater than 168 hours if you have any snapshots less than that seven days then it won't touch it won't delete by default because it won't delete this snapshot is today's snapshot just now we deleted but whenever you run a vacuum even dry run it will delete only greater than seven days greater than 168 hours 
Now, if you remove this dry run, vacuum, table, table, if you go this, even it won't delete that. Vacuum table name. Then if you go and verify this table, you can find both. You can find both. So still it is running in. So whenever you run a vacuum, by default, it won't raise any exceptions, but it will delete only greater than seven day snapshots. If you have any snapshot which is less than seven days or less than 168 hours, it won't delete. So now go and see this. So two files are available. It's not deleted. You can refresh it again. So both are available. Now, there is another option. If you want to remove less than seven days, so you can use one option called retain hours number of hours. Consider retain one hour or retain zero hours. Okay, a retain zero hours means you don't want any older snapshots. You don't want any older snapshots. But by default, this will be disabled. So you cannot vacuum or you can say you cannot delete less than 70 snapshots. That is default disable. So means you cannot delete. So there is a parameter called spark dot data bricks dot delta dot retention duration check this is enabled okay if this is enabled retention duration check default is 168 hours so you cannot delete less than 168 hours so you need to disable this this parameter you need to disable how to disable that even you can use a spark dot conf dot get you can get the parameter value by default, this will be enabled, true. Go and set this. Go and set as false. So retention duration check is enabled. I am disabled now. Now, whenever I go with a purging or you can say removing older snapshots, it won't validate less than 168 hours. Just it will go and purge old snapshots. Only it will remove data, old snapshots data, not latest data. Okay, in this two files, one is an old snapshot, another one is a new snapshot, latest data. So latest data means like 10, 20, sorry, 10, not 10, 20, 30, 40. Now go and verify once this is done. Out of these two files, it should remove one file, it should keep one file because that's the latest data. So whatever we deleted older version, that it should delete. Let's run it. So waiting. Now you see one file, it is deleted. Okay, now if you go and describe history, describe history means audit log will be there. It won't purge audit log. See, audit log still it is available. But when you try to fetch previous version one, it will raise exception. When you try to fetch, select star from department version as of one. So version as of one does not available. The data file is not available. It will raise exception. The data file we already purged. You will get exception saying that file not found exception. It is not a original issue, but we purged that older snapshots. But latest data is available. So only the reason here it is they're not deleting metadata, they are deleting only data. So metadata means transaction log. So this is about. So vacuum by default, it can, it can delete greater than 168 hours. If you want to delete less than 168 hours, okay, then you need to disable retention duration check. Once you disable, then you can use a retain option to remove to remove less than 168 hours data. But this is not suggested in production environments. When live transactions are happening, don't go with a zero hours. Okay? Don't go with a zero hours. Because same time, if multiple transactions are going on, even it can remove latest snapshots instead of removing older snapshots. Because if multiple transactions are happening, 
this vacuum can purge even latest transaction because still it is in progress state, right? So it is not suggest to go with the zero hours. Just I have explained how to purge because I have only recent transaction data. But don't go with the zero hours. Keep at least uh, two or three days data. Okay, so this is about vacuum in Delta Lake. Next station will understand a restore. If by mistake, if you delete, uh, if you or delete any data by mistake, if you update a data, if you want to restore previous transaction, how to restore that, that we will see in next video. This is about Delta Lake vacuum, Delta Lake vacuum. If you go to the Google Delta, cheat sheet is available, it's a, it's a PDF available, okay, which you can find both with the Python, with the SQL commands, both are available. Subscribe my channel. See you in another video.